2 Samuel chapter 17. Moreover, Ithahel said unto Absalom, Let me now choose out 12,000 men. That's a lot of men to go after David. That's how strong David and his men are. And I will arise and pursue after David this night, right now, tonight. Give me 12,000 men, I'll go, pay, I'll go chase David. And I will come upon him while he is weary and weak-handed. That hand is the first place that shows up in the Bible. The only place it shows up. David's weak. David is distraught. He doesn't know what's going on. I'm going to take advantage of him at this moment. Send me 12,000 men. Let's go get them. And we'll make him afraid. When he sees 12,000 of us, we're angry. We're going to come and get him. He's going, to, he's going to fear. And all the people that are with him shall flee. And I will smite the king only. I mean, the government's already disrupted. And now what we're going to do is we're going to take the king and all that are with him. We're going to disrupt them. And then we're going to kill David. What has David done? Absalom is the murderer. Absalom is the arsonist. Ar uh, uh, Ar Absalom is the one that has absorbed authority over David. And yet this is the will of God according to Nathan. By David's sins. God has not and will not allow David to die. And I will bring back all the people unto thee. The man whom thou seekest is as if all return, so all the people shall be in peace. I'm going to kill David, and I'll bring everybody back to you, Absalom. And they'll worship you, and they'll love you, and they'll coochie-coo you. Now, that's not going to make Absalom float to the ceiling with the hot air in his head. Maybe after he get his hair cut. Maybe I'll get all the people back. Remember, that's what he wanted. He wanted to be judge. He wanted everybody to love him, honor him. And after the hill's council is like, that's exactly what Absalom wanted. And the sayings please Absalom. So there you go. Well, and all the elders of Israel that are left behind. These are elders are not the ones that are with David. They're traitors. But Absalom's smart in a way. And he's not going to take the counsel of one man. He's going to take the counsel of a couple men. And then said Absalom, call me now Hushai. There is the man that David's friend. The Archite also. And let us hear likewise what he saith. Let's hear what he has to say. And Absalom's hoping that what Hushai says will be what uh, Asahil has said. And when Hushai was come to Absalom, Absalom spake unto him saying, Ethel has spoken after this manner. All right, so this is what Ethel has said. He's not given Hushai an opportunity to speak. Because if Hushai speaks, maybe he will not say what Ethel has said. And I like what Ethel said. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put the words in Hushai's ears. And he's got to agree. Because it's such a wonderful plan. Asphil has spoken after this man. This is what Asphil has said. Shall we do after his saying? If not, speak thou. Now I don't think Absalom is going to expect Hushai to speak. And Hushai said, So all right, Hushai opening his mouth, I don't agree with it. On to Absalom. The counsel that Asphil has given, now watch is not good at this time. Now look down almost near the end of verse 14. For the Lord had appointed to defeat the good counsel of Athahel. So what Athahel has said is very good. If we were not talking about David. Remember, David's protected by God. 
David is, I mean, God is allowing what's happened to David because sin in his life. He is reaping. But you're not going to kill him. Now, if we were talking about anybody else, Asahel's idea and counsel would be good. And the Holy Spirit said it was good. But not for David. It's not good at this time. For said Hathiel, uh, I'm sorry, as well, Hashiai, thou knowest thy father and his men, that they be mighty men, and they be chaste. That's angry, violent, heated. That's the first time. That's the only time that word shows up. Chaste. It's a medical condition too. Where your skin, it's been heated, it's been aggravated, it's raw, it's harassed. What a way to describe David. David is an irritation of anger and violence. You ain't going to kill him. Not with God's hand on him. In their minds, as a bear robbed of her whelps, that's the first time that shows up, and that's the baby bears in the field. When mama bear can't find her baby bears, her cubs. Woe be to anybody who comes across mama bear because she's going to kick some butt. And she's going to be ferocious. She's going to be angry. She's going to be vicious because anybody and anybody could have taken her babes, her cubs, and it could be you that's in the way. And when Hushai has described the men of David, what you just done, Absalom, you have angered your father and the men that are with him. You have usurped the authority of the throne. And they are not a fear. They are not afraid. They are not, they're, they're angry. And when they find a place to rest and, and do, they're going to think about what to do to get after you, boy. And guess what? The hand of God's on David protection. And thy father is a man of war. Now, I believe they call a man of war, there's a type of jellyfish in the ocean called a man of war. If you get stung by one of them things, you are in pain and there are people sent to the hospital. I don't know what the man, I don't know if the man of war would have anything to do with, I don't know if they had them jellyfish over there in Israel, but for a person who knows the man of war jellyfish and have seen them and have read about what they've done to people, your father is a military strength man. He is angry right now as a bear. You ain't going to make him afraid of anything. You ain't going to get no victory. So, and will not lodge with the people. He's going to go off on his own. The people are scattered. Why is David not with the people? Because he knows his head is to be on the platter. And he's going to protect his people. And the people knowing that David's not here with us for the only reason because he loves us. And if they were to find him, they would die. They know that David loves them and the loyalty of their king to the people. Not the loyalty of the people to the king. That would respect the people with David. The, the people are not going to run off. And if you kill David, you ain't coming out of there alive. With 12,000 men or 24,000 men. I guarantee it. This is that simple. Behold, he is now hid in some pit. Right, he's in an area right now that's probably resting. Thinking about resting. Or in some other place. And it will come to pass. When some of them be overthrown at the first, that whosoever heareth it will say, there is a slaughter among the people that follow Absalom. There are people in Absalom that are being killed. And he also that is valiant, whose heart is as the heart of a lion, shall utterly melt. And all Israel knoweth that the father, is, thy father is a mighty man, and that which he has asked. And they which be with him are valiant men. They're going to start hearing maybe a rumor or something that Absalom's men are dying. In this battle that you want to do. 
David loves those people even though they're under Absalom. You're going to make them even angrier that you're killing innocent people. They which be with him are valiant men. He's valiant, they're valiant. Therefore I counsel that all Israel be generally, that's the first time that word shows up, gathers unto thee, pointing right at Absalom, from Dan even to Bathsheba, as north as north and as south as south, as the sand that is by the sea for a multitude. Get everybody and anybody you can get, not just 12,000. You're going to beat David, you better get everybody. And you better call them from north, from south. How wonderful and mighty is David. What do you think? You think when Jesus Christ comes back, you think a bazooka is going to stop him? Do you think a nuclear war is going to stop him and his horse? Joel describes the men that are behind him, the Christians. They're going to walk their ranks. Somebody's going to stab them and they're not going to die. They're going to jump to the walls. They're going to jump over through the windows and they still won't break their ranks. When Jesus comes, you can get the whole wide world all together with a pop drink and singing lovely songs, but you ain't going to defeat that one on the horse. You ain't going to defeat Jesus Christ. You ain't going to defeat, defeat David, who's a type of Jesus Christ. Get everybody. You get them. Forget Abigail. You, you Absalom. Because you know what's going to happen? Absalom's going to die. And he's going to die in battle. He will be the third lamb. The fourth lamb. And the baby. Ammon. And then Absalom. Yeah. Yeah, then Absalom. He'll be the third lamb that will be dead. And be four. And he'll die the next chapter, but we're going to break this chapter in two again tonight. So David's a mighty man. Jesus Christ will be a mighty man. Do you say, did you see what it said about the men of David, the valiant? You know what we will be behind Jesus Christ as the bride of Jesus Christ? We're going to be valiant men on horses, riding. He also that is valiant, whose heart is as the heart of a lion shall utterly melt. For all Israel knows thy father is a mighty man. Jesus Christ is a mighty man. And they which be with him are valiant men. That will be us. Therefore I counsel that all Israel be separate, generally gathered unto thee, Absalom, from Dan unto Bathsheba, as the sand that is by the sea for a multitude, we're getting them all, and that thou, thou, Absalom, Go into battle. See, when Athel gave his advice, Absalom, you stay here. God's like, no, 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 no. Hushai, you tell Absalom you go into battle. I'm going to kill him in battle. He's going to die. Because he wanted David dead. You know all those that want Jesus Christ dead? That sword that comes out of his mouth, you're dead. That simple. All the people that wanted Jesus Christ dead when he was alive as 100% God, 100% man in Jerusalem, all them that wanted him dead, one day they're going to stand before him in the great white throne judgment if they did not get right and believe on the Lord Jesus Christ as their Savior. Absalom, type of Antichrist, he wants God, Jesus, dead. That thou go to battle in thy own person. You better go. So shall we come upon him. Oh, look at that we. Man, Hushai is buttering this guy up. This is David's friend. This is to be with David. He comes in and he says, God saved the king. And Absalom is like, no. You have loyalty to David. Why are you... Because... I will serve the king, whoever, and the people of Israel, who is the king, I will serve him, and I will show you my loyalty when we go. Now, you know it's a lie. 
So shall we come upon him, David, in some place, somewhere, <coughs> excuse me, where he shall be found, wherever we find him, we will, yeah, and we will light upon him as the dew falls on the ground. We're going to overshower him. We're going to overpower him. Who shall he? And this is kind of what happens. Absalom will end up hanging in a tree and he's surrounded by Joab's men. A dew falls in a tree and on the grass. Reverse. And of him, David, and of all the men that are with him, there shall not be left so much as one. Now the Antichrist is going to love to hear that. We will get victory over God. We will get victory over every single Jew. We will wipe them all out as I would assume what Adolf Hitler was thinking. Problem is Adolf Hitler ended up dead and they don't even know how he died. <laughs> we don't even know where his body is. Moreover, if he be gotten into a city, then shall all Israel bring ropes to that city. All Israel. Dan to Bathsheba, bring the rope, and we shall draw it into the river. We'll start grabbing ropes, we'll start hooking up the, the stones of that city, and we will drag down to the river. And that was a military tactic. Without engines, without machinery. That, I believe it was Alexander the Great with the city of Tyre. Took the city apart, the old city, and built a pier to go to the city that was out in the in the island in the sea. Move all those rocks. And when people look at the Great Pyramids today and they see those rocks and they say, how did they do that? Well, gentlemen, why don't we look at David and his men, well, Absalom's men. How did they get big rocks to build those cities? Without using caterpillars, without using uh, cranes, mechanical cranes, without having machinery and construction equipment. And yet it's done. And it, what it said, look what he says here. We're going to just get ropes. And we're going to grab the rocks in the city and we're just going to drag them. You realize how easy Hushai is saying that statement? Like, no problem. That's no problem for us. It's weird. And we will draw it into the river until there be not one small stone found. Boy, is he buttering Absalom. Absalom, if he goes in that city, we're going to pull that one. We'll grab every tiny little stone and we'll throw it in the river. <laughs> and Absalom's like, whoa, I like this. Yeah, let's go. And Absalom and all the men of Israel said the council of Hushai the Archite is better than the council of Ephraim. Watch. For the Lord had appointed to defeat the good council of Ephraim. It was very good counsel that Ephraim gave, but they went against David. They wanted David dead. And God sends in Hushai, and he puts a little buttering up in here that's got the flavor of Absalom. Like, whoa, wait. And these two men are going to die. Absalom and, I mean, yeah, Ethel and Absalom. Hushai won't. The Lord had appointed to defeat the good concept. I'm not going to kill David. And you're not going to kill David. To the tent, that's the first time that word shows up. That the Lord might bring evil upon Absalom. You know, Absalom could have hated that, that counsel and say, you know what, that is good counsel, but no, I ain't doing that. No, Absalom's like, yeah, I like that. Let's go. And then he calls in Hillside and God's like, you got to change some work, but I'm going to get him. I'm going to take care of both of them. Now, Asahel is going to die in the rest of this chapter, and Absalom is going to die in the next chapter. We'll close right there because we've got interesting things coming up. The 
you know, just break them apart right now and take them one at a one. Right now, we got the two councils. And there in Absalom at the council of Hushai, he's just drooling that this great victory. that he's going to be riding up there with the whole crew behind him. Israel, from Dan to Bathsheba, are going to be following me, Absalom, and I'm going to kill the king. Woohoo! And you got to cry, baby. It has to help. Wait till you see what happens to him. <laughs>